I don't want to be a pickle. This was an insight that occurred to me recently. It came to me just noticing since March of 2020, we've all experienced a tremendous amount of loss, shifting, and changing. And it occurred to me, these truckloads of loss, disappointment, and expectation, that I didn't want it to change me permanently. And so the insight came about, I don't want to be a pickle. As so often with my wisdom or intuition, it gives me something to reflect on. And it was as if I don't want to sit in vinegar all day, which goes under the category and umbrella of loss, disappointment, and expectation. I want to navigate loss, disappointment, and expectation and not have it changed me permanently. So I wanted to have a webinar, a conversation for all of us to explore that together. Thank you very much for joining in in the conversation. I hope you enjoy it. I don't want to be a pickle. That was an insight that came to me and um, it came to me over the past two years, a lot of, I'll say blunt, surprising um uh, occurrences in my life that I just didn't ask for, I didn't want, but they were life altering. And I noticed I was, you know, I, I feel like I've lived a very fortunate life when it comes to those things. And, um, and I noticed that all of these <clears throat> kind of compounding of, of situations it was kind of dimming my enthusiasm for life. And I was going, I'm not the first one. You know what I mean? I was like, so in the human condition, it looks to me like loss, disappointment, expectations, and breaks in reality are just part of the human experience for as long as human beings have been on the earth. And I got real curious about uh, I, I, I don't want to lose my enthusiasm for life. I don't want to lose the, the, I just didn't want to dumb down because I was noticing how I like the world better when I like the world better when I like the world better when my brother was alive. I like my, the world better when my mother was alive. I like the world better when my, when certain friendships were in place in the old way. I liked it better when my auntie was alive. So all of these things, um, I liked it better when I had people in the studio, you know? So it's like, I noticed like with the umbrella of change for everybody, nobody's not touched. If Even if it was just COVID, you know, if it, even the reality break, as I'm calling it, reality breaks are, are some of the subtle ways that our world changes and we get the we, we notice that that we're required to adapt to the change. So when I, and when I say reality breaks, it looks to me or as like reality breaks are are opportunities to wake up. Like the structure of COVID changed everything for everybody. So it kind of shook things up where everybody had to wake up a bit. Okay. And also I, it occurs to me like there are reality breaks throughout our life. Like when you <laughs> innocently and innocently, innocently, I'll put it this way. You really held an, a, a vision of someone or something or a relationship, you held it in your mind in a certain way, and you just saw it your certain way. And then there's a, a break in reality where either that person doesn't show up the same or you don't show up the same and kind of that bubble gets burst. And it, I call it a reality break where it's like, there was really what you, what I lived in as, as a, like a form it was always an illusion, but a form. And then um, you kind of have to, it's kind of like an egg and you're like, whoa, okay, what just happened? So that can be another place of impacting you or at least impacting me and going, gosh, how did I not see what's always been there? And now I'm seeing what's always been there from my mind's eye now, 
And what do I do with that kind of gobsmacked, in your face, reality break? You know, it's not what it was in my mind. And all of this is in my mind. <laughs> I think that's what we all have to own. <laughs> all of it lives in my mind. You know, I, I created the world I see, as they say in uh, uh, philosophy land, but I created the world I see. But innocently, we don't even know what the illusion is we're living in. So I've noticed that between reality breaks, between death, between um, shifting in the global environment of, you know, kind of clipping your wings of freedom and having to do things differently, um, and ex people not meeting my expectations per my illusion of them. That's another way of putting it out there. You know, where, or you've defined things in your mind that you thought that, that's how they were. And you thought that's how, you know, certain definitions were and people show up not matching that definition at all, at all. Or you also are confronted with situations and realities you never invited, you never wanted, but they're yours to handle. Okay. So as all of that kind of started to pile up and my, my enthusiasm for life started dumbing down, I got curious. I was like, okay, like I said a minute ago, I'm not the only person that has confronted these things. So I'm not in the wah, wah uh, victim mentality. I'm in the place of like, okay, how have those before me gone through these things and still wake up with a zest and enthusiasm for life, you know? And um, so I got this fabulous insight that said, I don't want to be a pickle. And my intuition is kind of cuckoo. I mean, it gives me movie titles and song lyrics, and then it invites me to kind of look at it and see what um, what uh, unfolds. And then when I looked at it, and I just happened to be in my kitchen looking at a jar of pickles, I was like, oh my God, you know, it's sitting in vinegar. It's steeped in bitterness all day long. And I said, I don't want to be that person. <laughs> I don't want to be that person. So, um, for me, simply being curious about not wanting to live in a, in vinegar and I'll say mental vinegar. I don't want to live in thoughts about events, situations, people. I don't want those living in my head. That would be the vinegar of the story, you know, living in my thinking about what shouldn't have happened, what did happen, what I could have done, what I didn't do, what I did too much of, what I didn't do enough of, you know, all of that's the vinegar. Because I, I noticed that as I just innocently have those things on my mind, just trying to get present and take the next action, I was finding it really tough to be present because all that vinegar was just contaminating um, head space, brain space, my ability to get present, okay? So um, by simply getting curious about wanting to, to live with less of all of this pain in my day-to-day -day life or less of all of this vinegar in my day-to-day -day life, um, it, it launches an invitation to your highest intelligence to bring you solutions for you, okay? To bring, to bring you insights, to bring you fresh insights about anything you have a curiosity about. Now, in, in just that part, is there any anything that pops in your mind that you're curious about so far? Yes, ma'am. 
I'm curious about how those things can change you and do. And because I can relate to a lot of that. And, mm -hmm. and when you say how it can change you, is that what you're? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. well, in your experience, how has, how, what do you mm -hmm. know about when those things happen? Does it mm -hmm. impact you or does it change you permanently or temporarily? It, it, over some, maybe two years since my father died, which I didn't expect, uh, I, I expected him to die. He was old, but I, I didn't uh, expect, I didn't realize I was going to be like all alone, that I had no family. It didn't even dawn on me until it was almost close to him dying. And then I was like, oh, my God, <laughs> I still like the last person in the family. And so I went through a lot of that period that you talk about, you know, those innocent sort of thoughts about how, I don't know, just whoops, my battery for some reason not charging. Um, wait a minute. <clears throat> Um, can you hear me? I can. Yeah, sorry about that. So I, I went through all those just kind of different sort of innocent thoughts and just, you know, fears and things. And, um, but, uh, you know, as of, as of today, I feel really propelled for change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, like, like maybe I feel as though like I'm not as afraid um, of things anymore. If I can take bigger risks mm -hmm. and have more fun in a way, hopefully. Um, yeah, like I can almost feel like I can feel like I can do stuff that's really stepping way out for me out on a cliff and not really even think about that I might fall off as much, you know? I mean, I'm kind of aware that I could die, but um, <laughs> I'm not even really as afraid of that, you know? Uh, so it has totally, sh churned me around. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, then that's the part that's, interesting to look at or look in the direction of is there's an intelligence that got your head back above water they got my head up back above water mm. you know because i think when like where you sit now i don't i don't it i i didn't go into trying to figure out how to feel better mm. You know, a lot of times we do. We think we want to go into action on a bad feeling or we go into action saying I need to do something to to feel better about what's happening in my life. And the invitation is really the greatest invitation is not to do anything about it and let let the biggest intelligence be the kind of an innate life jacket that will pop your head up above water versus looking for fixes to feel better if you know it exists i mean you kind of have to know or, or like i said it it helps to take it from invisible to obvious that we have this capacity for our uh, head to come back up above water and even we don't need to know how it's going to happen There's a line that once you're a pickle, you can never be a cucumber. <laughs> I, I didn't know that existed. I didn't know that existed. And I can't tell you how many people have sent a message to me. <laughs> I was like, I had to do some research. And I even had to uh, go to YouTube and look up this Arlo Guthrie song about, um, I don't want to be a pickle or something. I was like, well, I didn't know if that was out there either, but that's uh, it's out there too. <laughs> <laughs> and something about a, I don't want to be a pickle, just want to ride my motorcycle or something like that. And <laughs> <laughs> it's an Arlo Guthrie song. And he said, you know, and I, which I love is like, he said, who would have ever imagined you could make a career out of singing a song as dumb as this one? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so we don't know what's possible. So, <clears throat> so that place about um, um. the occurrences in life, I'm noticing don't have to change you if you can 
do, I don't even like the word do. If, if you can find a place to relax with what's happening. You know, because when these things come or happen around us, we tend to contract and go into action on them and get real busy trying to fix it or feel better. And so it's, people go, well, this is what people usually say. They say, it's counterintuitive to do nothing. It's like, I wouldn't call it counterintuitive. I'd kind of say it's counter conditioning because our, our conditioning says go into action and fix this and do better. But intuitively, your innate resilience will bring your head back above water. That's that life jacket we're talking about. But we don't, a lot of people don't know, I sure, certainly didn't know it was built into the system because I'd been such a busy doer and a fixer and a self-improver and all that kind of good stuff that um, I thought that stuff was helping. And I mean, it got me to here. I'm not complaining, but I'm just saying it didn't have to be that hard. You know? Yes, Lisa. I just want a kind of more of an explanation of that because like, I guess what I'm hearing is that if you're, if you're, you know, that you might go through, you know, grief and loss and, um, and everything, um, and uh, accept, you know, kind of be able to sort of accept it and let it go through let yourself go through it and then not try to like, think like for me, like, oh, this is tragic. You know, I'm all alone on the planet, you know, and get myself depressed in other words so, or then spend thousands of dollars on therapy because I am depressed you know and things like that I guess is that kind of what you're saying that's exactly what I'm saying it's like if we didn't um <clears throat> if we didn't pay so much attention to what my mind is making up about what's happening we we tend to I heard one of my clients say this this week, and I just loved it. And she said, you know what? I really looked at my thoughts as my spiritual advisor. And I said, isn't that the truth? <laughs> I think your thinking was your spiritual advisor, like it knew what was best. I'm like, holy moly. I love that, that, that idea of the human mind being your spiritual advisor. I was like, no, that's a great insight. <laughs> but, but... You know, as long as it's been around about can you be present to what you're feeling and relax as best you can, the invitation to get, it sounds so cliche, but it's not, but to, to look away from what your mind is making up about what's happening and really look at what's really happening. You're sitting in a room, you're in front of a computer screen, you know, when before you might have been oriented to what's being generated in your head about this situation or that situation. You see, Lisa? And so like the, the second part of the insight that kind of came in that once this inquiry kind of got launched about uh, I don't want to I don't want to lose my enthusiasm for life, the insight about I don't want to be a pickle, and then I noticed how um, my mind would want to grab and obsess th obsess on things, whether it was it it doesn't even, it doesn't even make sense what it obsesses on you know but it would obsess on something and my and my feeling state would drop. And then it, <clears throat> then the next insight came in, just not, it's not linear, but it just came in and it was like, wait a minute, I'm not going to let my thoughts ruin my life. And I noticed that, but for me paying attention to all that was missing, all that was not here, all that had changed, all that I don't have control over, all of the situations I didn't invite, when I took my mind off of those things and really got present into life, I, I, I wasn't miserable. 
I just wasn't miserable. And so I was like, gosh, if I really kept my mind on all the things that, like <laughs> roll call, all the people who aren't here that were here, all the, <clears throat> all the situations I didn't want but happened. I was like, if I keep my mind there, it keeps in me in a lower state of mind and every choice I make through that the day is going to be a match to that lower sense of being. And that's where all the self-sabotage comes in. That's where all the choices that come in that, you know, that bag of M&Ms looks completely, and I don't mean the little bag of M&Ms, I mean the, the grande bag of M&Ms. <laughs> looks like it makes perfect sense to grab a handful every time I pass through the, uh, the kitchen, you know. So it's like, but, so it's like, gosh, that keeping those things on my mind, churning on them or even fermenting on them, my, I can't help but make actions out into the world that are a match for that. But when I just said, I'm not going to let my thinking ruin my life. My life is great. I have a, we're living. We have a chance to live here. For whatever reason, we are here. Those that left, left for whatever reason they left. And those that are here, that's where we're here for something. Like I said, I don't think our we have many chapters left to write. But... <clears throat> So I say that so that in your own experience of life and your own curiosity about life, once you start to see that you have um, you have an opportunity to, to live life via what your mind is making up about it, or you and you or you have an opportunity to respond to life as it's happening here in front of you. Sorry, I don't mean to consume this, Great. but just on the same theme, I, I just, uh, you know, um, um, okay, so it's like, it's sort of like, okay, so before when the family was all in place and the dog and everything, um, so you, you kind of have this expectation, it's always going to be this way, and, um, and then uh, you get blown out of the water for, by it. And, and if I remained in those expectations and tried to bring those back, I'd be really struggling with myself, essentially. Um, and so for me, it was recognizing how much actually more freer I was. It, it, that's, that, that was a slow dawning, but that's what so I was just sort of accepting where I was and not trying to make up for it, the loss, essentially, you know, exactly. I guess. Exactly. Okay. And, and, and it's like we can, once we start to really witness what our mind is making up about stuff, I mean, I haven't noticed that um, my mind tried to suggest to me that if I didn't keep my mother on my mind, that would be not honoring her. And I was, and, and I was like going, mm, wow. I said, love doesn't stop. Love does not stop. It doesn't have a beginning and an end, you know? And I was like going, wow, how debilitating would that be to, to back to that point about, um, I'm not going to let my thoughts ruin my life. If I had that <clears throat> on my mind that I had to keep my mother on my mind or the absence of my mother on my mind in order to honor her. What a load. It just felt like such a load to carry. And I was like, that could not be farther from the truth, but I lived in that. I felt that, you know, felt the same way about my brother. You know, I was like, no, I need to honor his passing. Even I don't like the way he passed, but even I have to honor his passing. I'm going, no, I'm going to see perfection in that too. In the sense of everyone's action to me is fueled by source anyway. So I'm not going to make any action wrong. I'm not going to, I'm not going to have his, his, 
his my love for him in this life be tainted by any sort of uh human action not gonna do it so just i think it's all these kind of concepts that innocently our mind makes up about these occurrences that happen in our life that to get let them let the let the whiteboard get clean you know, be curious about what your mind is making up about these losses or, or disappointments or expectations or whatever you want to talk about. And, and get curious about what your mind's making up about it. What your mind's making up about you and those things happening. Because the, the facts are these situations occurred, but beyond that, if it gets into interpretation of sticky, which is just what the mind does. It just goes into interpret things to try to make sense of things. And, and then it can weigh heavy on your mind. But you, if it helps so much to see it's just a personal in, interpretation of your own mind. A personal interpretation of your own mind. Not It can be cleaner than what your mind is making up about a situation. And then you're naturally going to have an, uh, a, a more fluid existence because you're not carrying all that ideas and concepts on what's happening. I think that was one of the most helpful things I heard was like, love never dies. So if my mind is making up, I have to do something in relationship to it mm -mm. Mm -mm. and then those situations they pass through and then the whatever this intelligence is somehow puts our head back up above water but we can't really see the sunshine above water if we keep those things on our mind Bobby I was uh listen to an Eckhart Tolle meditation on, on uh, presence. And he, he, he mainly, he, he, he's, he can be really funny, but in this meditation, he talked about being present and about getting, uh, you know, first to be aware of your surroundings and then, and then to feel the life in your, inside your body. And, uh, you know, a couple other things he said to, to help you be present. And, um, and I, you know, I thought about it or whatever. And, and then I'm, I'm sitting in my car today. I have no idea what I was thinking about, but I was thinking about something. And I thought about that uh, being present. And when I did, it's like whatever was on my mind and whatever feelings that were associated with it that apparently weren't particularly pleasant. Because when I thought about being present, all of a sudden I just was present and it was just like a space opened up and, and everything else fell away. It was, it was, it lasted, I don't know, a now second, but, but it was just so wonderful, so delightful. And, and it, it you know, I just, I, I just was uh, fortunate enough to have that experience, you know? Yeah. It, it kind of, put things in perspective, you know, like, wow, you know, it's just right here available right here, right now, right here and uh, right here between me and the steering wheel, you know? Yeah. It was nice. Absolutely. Absolutely. It is, it is. Mm -hmm. it, and I think the, the, the looks to me like those very enriching moments uh, occur the, when the more, when more of me, is in that moment you know if, if part of me is in this story about me and this story about them and that story about what they did I mean, it dilutes my ability to be present and so then you know i don't feel that rich connection to something or someone because i've got i've got all of these plates spinning unconsciously you know or even um unintentionally <clears throat> But to your point, it's like, oh my gosh, when we really have that, that 
when if when something falls away or a lot falls away, all of a sudden, like you said, you're experiencing a totally different reality than you were when we were up in our head. You know, sitting in the front seat of the car at a steering wheel can have such a, a rich feeling. And we're like, how did that happen? I'm still sitting right in the car in front of the steering wheel. But all of a sudden, it's like the the um, the, the clouds parted and all of a sudden sun got in. How did that happen? How did that happen? More of you got right here. And it sounds so overstated. I mean, teachers since the beginning of time have been saying this stuff, but when you have a moment like that, Bobby, where you see it, you see you see this incredibly stark contrast between a suffering existence, a dissatisfied existence, or whatever kind of existence, and then for whatever reason, your mind's not on it, it all falls away, and you're like, wow, look at the green of that tree. That is so incredible. <laughs> You see the magnificence of life or you just feel peace in that moment. You know, you, every problem you had one, one nanosecond ago, where did they go? Now, if I go back to that compartment in my head, they'll still exist. <laughs> Guaranteed. But if I, you know, and, and we can go back and forth, but we get this opportunity to wake up to that travel about, gosh, uh, that's what I think. It's like, man, I'm back in the pickle jar. It's like, no, uh-uh. Lids off. I may find myself in there, but I I'm, I, I will find my way out. I will Something will wake me up and wake me up in shorter amounts of time that I'm climbed back into the jar because it looks, so comfortable, you know. I needed to whine or yan yan about something, so I climbed back in the jar. <laughs> so what? So what? So sorry, everybody. Nobody's raising a hand, but I. I <laughs> so you're essentially you're saying, um, you know, you didn't do anything, right? <laughs> No, that's exactly your thank you, Lisa. That's exactly what I'm saying. But somehow though, I mean it's amazing because when you look at it, it's like, you know, some people would say, Well, gosh, you 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 know, you could never get over that. Never get over that. And some, you know, yet here you are. You know you're feeling not maybe necessarily over but whatever you're feeling you're feeling so. I think, gosh lisa that, you're so right because if we had imagined um, some of the things i mean people have experienced horrific situations in life you know horrific and even the things that occurred in our life that we would have never invited if we had thought about them ahead of time we're like i'd never survive it i've not thought about that many times like oh man i would just be on the floor in a fetal position i couldn't do it and then worse than that happens and you're like i shouldn't be functioning and then but you're doing the next thing that needs to be done you know it's fascinating to me so again that's so much of that made upness mm. That's all that those concepts and ideas about our abilities and our presence on the planet until we get confronted with stuff. And then it's like, what takes over? Something much grander, much, much bigger than this. Because you go into action, you know, I mean, not go into action, but you, you, you navigate them. Even if you do find yourself on the floor in a feeding position, you won't stay there. And if you do, so what? But you won't forever. You'll have to get up and go to the potty or something sometime. You'll get up. <laughs> something will get you up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But even keeping that on your mind, Lisa, that, oh, my God. Oh, my God. That was the worst thing that happened, and I'll never get over it. You're blocking your own innate ability to get your head above water because you are past it. 
is not happening right now. And innocently, innocently, we kind of look towards some of those traumas thinking, oh, if I'd done something different, it wouldn't have happened. And how can I fix it and all that? But in that, during that time, we're just re-traumatizing ourselves. We're taking ourselves back to those situations and going back in my head about it. And it's robbing me of this fresh moment. I'm not changing the facts, but I'm also not uh, going to, you know, what's that word? Flog myself by looking at it. It happens a lot in, in relationship, you know? It's like, oh my gosh, somebody hurt your feelings in a relationship 20 years ago, and man, everybody that comes in your path is going to have to uh, make amends for what happened to you 20 years ago. It's like, oh, not a good idea. <laughs> you know I mean? Not a good idea. They're innocent. Innocent. You can take it off the table and just meet this person for who they are. They don't have to meet your criteria. You could just meet this person. Viv, do you have your hand up? Well, I mean, I I I, I hear and and agree with what you're saying, but there's a risk. I mean, when we go into our head, it's because we're afraid to touch our feelings. Mm -hmm. There's a fear there, and when you're in it, it's really hard to get out of it. And. You know, so, so my choices when I'm in it are, you know, have another cup of coffee, eat some chocolate, call a friend, go to bed, watch a movie, you know, get on Facebook. Um, and, and I think recently I have been sort of trying to develop some tools and practices to, to support me when when i'm in my head because i know for me at least it is pretty much 100% a hundred percent a refuge when i'm fearful mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um <sighs> so let, here's a let me jump in if you don't mind Viv. so here please here's please story so so when our mind is real active and we go into action on what our mind is doing, you're going to prolong the bad feeling. You're going to be in it longer. Okay. Now, if we didn't get scared of it, here's the deal. It's like when we really get upset and are deep in our feelings, we feel like, I don't know about you, but oftentimes like, man, if I go in there, I'll be falling into an abyss and I will never come out. That's what my mind would make up. And it's like, but my mind is so limited and discounts the high, the intelligence that beats it. And if I can be present and just, if I want to sit on the floor and just cry, I promise you I've done it many times. So I just sit on the floor and cry. It, the energy or the feeling passes through because I'm not scared of it. I don't like it. Don't want it. It's not invited to my party. But anytime I, I try to shield myself from feeling whatever it is I'm feeling, it, it keeps it at the door instead of letting it come in and go out the back door. And so I say, so what if you're in that mood and you want to binge Netflix? Who says that's not the best thing? Or I'll say, but you can let it, let it, um, occur to you in those moments, but not have a strategy about it. Like when I get in a funk, I'm going to do X. It's like, no, no, no. Just know that if you get in a funk, which we all will, and we all do, get in a funk, if I know that, that no funks last forever. Now, it feels like they will, and it feels like they do, but no funks last forever. And I could take a few breaths go on about my life or whatever's in front of me. You know, if your dog has come off the leash, you can't, you, you're going to go into action about getting the dog on the leash. You're not going to say, I'm in a funk. I cannot get my dog back on the leash. No, you kind of get in the moment of what's happening and, and respond at that moment. You see? 
But if, if we don't, if, if we don't let our mind make up that I can't handle this depth of feeling, it will come in the front door and out the back door. And just do your best to be as supportive of yourself. And, and I say just, if you can resist any destructive behavior, that's great. Because you'd only be responding to the direness that your mind is making up. You know? Does that make any sense, Bib? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, I think sometimes it's hard to tease out what is just, yeah, create, creating strategies, which is just more thinking. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And it's only in the last few days that I realized, correct, I am binge watching Netflix, and that's okay. Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> Permission is a wonderful thing, you know, just to be here yeah. and do whatever it is. <laughs> you need to bake brownies, bake brownies, you know, whatever you're drawn to do, just do it and make it okay. That's hard well, with it. Do you see how that's as much relaxing with it as taking a deep breath going, all I got is I want to get to the bottom of that bag of M&Ms. So what? Eat the M&Ms. Well, and I was never able to enjoy this, whatever it is which yeah, usually is the binge watching Netflix. There are a few other behaviors that, you know, and, but I wasn't, wasn't able to enjoy them because I, you know, I just felt so guilty while I was doing it. It's like, oh, I shouldn't be doing this. I shouldn't be doing this. I shouldn't be doing this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and once I realized I am doing it. So since I'm doing it, it must be just fine. There must be, there must be some reason I need to watch this show. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. If nothing else, man, what does it do? It helps put your mind on something other than the drama your mind's creating. Let me put it on that drama, you know what I mean? Instead of the one my mind's making up. <laughs> right. Right. Put it on that. Yeah, but so what? So what? And then that energy or that it 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 can't grip you. Every time you let it pass through, it can't grip you as tightly the next time it comes around. Because you're, you're you so you you have I'll say survived the intensity of the feeling, so the next time or whatever disappointment comes around and you 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 can you won't feel it as intensely because you just let yourself feel it versus managed it. I'm discovering that I have feelings around some of the strangest unexpected things. And I guess it's not really strange. The thing I'm thinking about was yesterday um, and it had to do with money and my relationship with money and my vulnerability with other people around decisions and discussions around money. And I, I, I found myself in a situation where I was being very honest with somebody and it just brought up all of this emotion and stuff that was really hard for me. And it evidently is, is still very present. Um, and it, it, it's very new, you know, to go into a situation and, and have this sort of stuff come up for me because uh, before I would have just sh shut it down long before and, and it feels good because I, I knew I was really being honest and that and ultimately that's going to be helpful it's going to solve more of my problems than to hide my situation but um but yeah it it, it wasn't it wasn't enjoyable to feel those feelings in front of this person who is a virtual stranger. Um, anyway, that's it. I love, I love the realness of it, Bib. 
I really love the realness of it because it also gives them permission to be as equally real with you. And that's what seemed to happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful thing. And I've never, I mean, I, I remember the few little times, you know, as I got more in touch with my feelings that I was able to be real with people that maybe didn't feel very close to me. And, and, and I kind of felt a reciprocal kindness, how powerful that is. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, it, it's still uh, uncomfortable to, sh to share that vulnerability with people. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. And it's, it's, it, it's like, but you, you can never, ever, ever, ever fail at being real. You can never fail at being real. You just can, and then it to me it just up it, it it it's a bump to the whole conversation, the whole interaction. A bump up or a bump down? Oh, yeah, bump up. <laughs> like a bump up. You know, because really you go, you'll see more and more and more. You got nothing to lose. The mind makes up we have something to lose by being vulnerable, or the mind makes up. I have something to lose if I show human frailty or it's like, well, there's nobody that's to, has not felt vulnerable. It's like, yeah, there's nothing to do. If you kind of look at it, it's like, what are we defending? What are we defending when we think we can't show up on our building? I'm just defending a whole bunch of concepts in my head about what a decent human being is. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I'm defending or my, my identity in the world. It's like, oh my God, you know, I'm, what am I defending? That, that concept, that made up part of me, you know? Yeah. And I want to add being perfect. Oh God. Or getting, it right. <laughs> getting it right. You know, just getting it right. Whatever being a human is and getting it right. Getting it right. Yeah. Bobby. When, you know, listening to you, Viv, I, I think that you're, I, I just can almost uh, feel what it would be like for me to be vulnerable and tell somebody something that I didn't, well, to, to be vulnerable, whatever that meant. But what, and I don't know what you're, what you meant, but, but I do, when you, when you're talking, I, I have this sensation, this feeling that, that, uh, that I've, I've been vulnerable in situations and felt so uh, unshielded, so um, uh, concerned about what somebody else thought about me. And, and, it, uh, and, and it's so interesting because when I see you do that, whatever the situation or content was, you know, I just have, you know, my, I just feel my heart open, you know? And uh, so good for you for being uh, courageous enough to put that out into the world because that's a that's that's a real a real gift for for uh, for me. Yeah, so thanks Viv, for being you. Yeah, I love that because <laughs> that let something go. Let that let something go because aliveness is going to come behind it, guaranteed. You let something stale out the back door, and aliveness is going to come in. If you can just bear the discomfort, if you can just bear the uncomfortableness of it, I don't care if you need to put on that. Uh, I've done that in my mind, like when it's so uncomfortable, and I want to find the exit sign. You know, I mean, I literally it occurred to me once: put on my seatbelt and just sit in this chair and see what see what it does, you know, white knuckle it and just see what it does. Don't move. And as intense as the discomfort comes, it goes. I thought it was such a fascinating experiment when it 
happened to me. It was like, don't move, sit in this chair and just see what it does. Cause you think you won't survive it, you know? And it's like, put on your seatbelt and didn't move. And I promise you, it was probably back to Bobby's nanosecond. It passed through, but I would have held on to it, you know, like a full glass of water all day trying to manage it if I hadn't just sat there and let that discomfort pass through. Because I didn't know it would pass through. I thought I'd go into the abyss and never come out. To me, it felt like doing something that I would only do in the painting room. Right. Right. <laughs> <If that. laughs> and, and doing that in an environment with a near total stranger and 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 what what this makes me think of is michelle saying now you know don't go home after this 10-day painting retreat and say you want a divorce or you know don't make any dramatic decisions and here i was you know making decisions that were pretty dramatic you know uh-huh. <laughs> But 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 if, you really, but if you really hold on to it, going wait a minute, I cannot fail because something will occur to me. After this happens, something else will occur to me. After this happens, something else will occur to me. Yeah, that's to me. That's going back into my head. But I mean, you're right. You're right. No, it's from a. But it's. I mean, kind of a knowing, just the nature of life that something else will occur to me. You don't have to go. Yeah, to I mean, it's 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 faith. Um, to me, it's like a knowing. It's like you don't have to trust the system. You just got to see it in action. Truth is, something else will occur to you. Yeah. I don't hope and pray the sun's going to come up tomorrow. It just does. So I don't have to carry that on my mind that I have to have faith that the sun's going to come up. It's just the way it works. The sun comes up. It's just kind of getting in the system. So, so any... In, Oh, we're at right, right at the end of our time. Does anybody have one last question or anything that would take you out into the world with a quieter mind? Just a quick little insight that if, I feel like if, if you're true to yourself, and I think I practice on chiropractors and dentists and people that I say, no, I don't want you anymore. But if you're true to yourself, you know, you, you can be the best you can be. And sometimes you have to, you, you know, you hurt people and you don't want to do that. You want to avoid that at all costs, right? Mm -hmm. But it, then you're just carrying around that falseness with yourself. So it only really hurts yourself. It just, it felt like an insight because it's like, you know, if you're true to yourself, to your own self, be true. It's a, you know, that kind of a line sounds self-centered, but in the long run, it's, I don't think it really is. So, yeah. Right. Oh, okay. no, no. Without intent to hurt you, without intent to hurt, you, you know, no. with intent to hurt, but you just being you. Somebody, I mean, you know, I don't know, me being me, I can easily offend people. It's not my intent, but <laughs> it's just me being me. I can't help it if I offend you. That's not my problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but, but without the intent to hurt. Yeah. But moving through life. Um, yes, Kelly. Oh, such a rich conversation. Uh, first, I want to thank Vivia for sharing what she shared because I realized so much, um, so much of my cherished beliefs, who I think I need to be in front of the face of the world. And recently, I've just been unfolding um, such deep truths. And it's funny, they just, I just, I don't know, wisdom said, tell your friend now, you know, and it just so happened that I was with my closest friends in my world. And I just, it, you know, when you're, you're walking along, you're talking about the trees, isn't that it? And then I blurted it out. He's like, no, this is coming out now. I don't even know where it came from. And then they're looking at me like, what? And it was about being depressed and having to go on medication. And, and, and my friends just think that, oh, you know, what? And anyways, it was such a beautiful experience that that I allowed in and it was me that allowed it in. Wisdom guided me, but it was me that allowed it. And 
and the vulnerability and nature of those conversations just has freed me the load of the perfectionism and the things that I think I needed to be and and the cherished beliefs that I carried about you know um well you need to be this and you need to be that and you can't be that and don't tell the world this and you know and even sitting in this room uh thinking you know I have so many thoughts and it's like Kelly you don't have them together yet you can't put them you know so why raise your hand you're not really there yet you know and, and still feeling like, well, I wonder what they're going to think. Maybe they think I'm not participating and you know, all that shit that's going on. Right. But I just thought, no, it's just like when you're ready, the, 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 the wisdom will come and it just does. It just comes out. And so thank you for this absolutely rich conversation today. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks everybody for coming. It's just that, and I just wrap it up saying that, that if you're curious about something, the bottom line would be, please don't try to figure it out. You can be curious and how relaxed and loving can you be for your, to yourself? You know, the more you can relax with a curious curiousness, not a, you don't have not working at it, but just relax and, you know, kind of wait for the FedEx truck to arrive with an insight or some wisdom. Relax and something will occur to you. It just will, because you're, you're more awake and you're more present. And, and if you have a desire to live more in the moment and less in your head, you've enlisted a creative process to wake you up to that. Mm. You know, just having a, a desire to, I'm tired of my stories I have about people. You know, I see that they're my stories <laughs> and I'm tired of those stories about people. I'm like, I want to see something fresh about this. I just want to see something fresh instead of reinforcing what the stories I've carried. I want to see something fresh and it will happen. Thank you again for listening to I Don't Want to Be a Pickle. I hope you found something hopeful in seeing the innocence of believing what we think and living into that thinking. Because when you really reflect on it, what else could ruin your life except your thinking? Something to consider. I find it very helpful. There's many videos on my YouTube channel. I appreciate you listening and wish you the very best. Thank you.